Here we're going to take a look at how we can multiply decimals, which lines up with our 3.3 and 3.4 sections in our textbook. So the first way we can go about multiplying decimals is by following these steps. Um, you should be recording these steps down so you can look back at them as we work throughout the problems. The first step would be to first estimate our product. So this is using those estimation tools from our previous section. Then you want to remove the decimals and multiply the two whole numbers as if they were never including decimals at all. And lastly, we're going to look back at our estimation and then we are going to figure out where we should put the decimal based on our estimation. Let's try it out. So the question here asks us to find the product of 2.3 multiplied by 6. And thinking back to my steps, I've got to remember I have to estimate, then multiply, and then place the decimal. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to estimate, and I know 2.3 is close to 2, so I'm going to say 2 times 6, and we know that that is 12. So our final answer should be somewhere near 12. Okay, so we got our estimation done. Now let's go ahead and let's multiply. So that means we are going to set up our question without the decimal, so 23 times 6. Do you notice how I don't have the decimal in here? And let's multiply. We know 6 times 3 is 18. Carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12 plus the 1 is 13. So 138 is our answer. So now we've multiplied. And now we have to look back and we have to place our decimal. And we do that by knowing our answer should be around 12. So if I place my decimal at the very end, 138 is nowhere near 12. Now, if I put it between the 3 and the 8, I know 13.8, that's pretty close to 12. So there we go. We have multiplied these two decimals successfully. Let's try another one out. In this question, we have a few more digits to deal with. We have 1.351 times 4. So first things first, I know I need to estimate. So I know 1.351 is very close to just 1. So I'm going to go 1 times 4, and we know that that is Four. So we've got our estimate. We know our final answer should be somewhere near 4. Okay, now we can go ahead and we can multiply. So we get rid of our decimal and we rate out our question. So we got 1,351 times 4. And we can multiply this just like we know how to multiply any number like this. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So I put the 2 down, I or the 0, I carry the 2. And then 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Carry the 1. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Okay, so we've went through, we've done our multiplication, and now i got to figure out where am I going to put this decimal. If I put the decimal at the very end, 5,404, that is nowhere near 4, so that does not work. We should not put our decimal there. Okay, If we put it here, it would be 540.4. Again, nowhere near 4. If we were to put it here, 54.04, eh, not really close. But again, if we put it right here between f the 5 and the 4, 5.404 is very close to 4. So our final answer should be 5 decimal 404. Now we're going to look at another strategy that we can use when we're multiplying decimals. In this strategy, we're going to set up the numbers we're multiplying on top of each other, just like we would multiply any number with large digits. Okay, then we're going to just ignore the decimals altogether for right now. And then we're going to multiply those numbers together like we normally would. And then at the end, this is what we'll see in the examples, we're going to go back and count the number of decimal places we had in the question and put that many decimal places in the answer. So I would jot these down, and then you'll see this in the example how this works. All right, let's try that strategy out. So the question we have here is 2 decimal 5, 4 times 8. And the steps that we're going to be doing is first we're going to multiply normally, ignoring the decimals. So let's start there. So 2.54 times 8. Okay, do you notice I kept the decimal in the question, but we're going to ignore it as we multiply. So 4 times 8 gives us 32, carry the 3. 5 times 8 gives us 40 plus 3, so 43, but we're going to carry the 4. 
2 times 8, 8 times 2, gives us 16, plus 4 is 20, so we can write down 20. Now, we've got that section done. So now we're going to count the decimals in our question. So, decimal places. So after the 2, we had one decimal place, and then another decimal place. So that's two decimal places. Okay, so we've got that checked. And now if we go to our very last step here, we place the decimal so the answer has the same decimal places. So this answer needs to have two decimal places in it. So if I start at the very end, I can go in one, two, there's my decimal place. So my answer is 20 decimal three, two. Now let's try it again with a little bit different of a setup. So in this question, we have zero decimals, zero, four, five, six times three. Okay, so we haven't dealt with numbers that are smaller than zero yet, but the strategy ends up being the exact same. So we're going to multiply normal, ignoring the decimals. So I'm going to write it out just like we did before. Zero decimal, zero, four, five, six times three. Okay, and we're going to do this multiplication. So three times six gives us 18, carry the one. 3 times 5 gives us 15, plus 1 is 16, carry the 1, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 gives us 13, and I could carry the 1 here, and I will, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, okay, and if we kept going, 3 times 0 is just a 0, so I can put another 0 there if I'd like. So we've multiplied normally, we ignored the decimals while we did the multiplication. Okay, now we're going to count those decimal places back in the question. So in this case, we had one decimal place, two decimal places, three, four. We had four decimal places. Okay, so we know that if we go back into our answer, we know our answer must have the same number of decimal places. So it must have four. So I'm going to start at the very back. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. That's where my decimal needs to go. So our final answer in this case is zero decimal one three six eight